big theme today was people and peat because sometimes we look at peat as just an ecosystem for biodiversity or conservation aspect. Um, what about the people on it? Talk to me about the connection. Okay, yeah, that's exactly what the session was about. Um, it's about the other relevance of peatland in Indonesia, especially in Indonesia. Um, we have a, a, a large peatland area of 15 million hectares and some of them uh, perhaps, yeah, I, I can quote some of the literature saying that between 10 to 25 percent have been occupied by uh, local people, by communities. And it has um, happened since 1970s, so it's been like 40, 50 years. So the, the relevance of people in the pit ecosystem is, is very high. And I think that is why it has to be part of the equation in dealing with the most recent uh, emerging issues of conservation and sustainability. Mm -hmm. Do you think this connection sometimes is overlooked? Um, I think, yeah. Well, actually, before the big uh, fire event of 2015, mm -hmm. It was not in the radar, in the, in, in the uh, discussion of sustainability of peatland uh, discussion radar. So um, it used to be overlooked, but it survived, you know. I mean, these local people, they manage the land in a small scale um, a fashion. They manage to plant some, uh, you know, commodities and sustain livelihoods. Uh, but they, they also had problems and it was sort of overlooked. Uh, although in other, on the other side, they survive uh, their, their way. Yeah? Uh, so, but you know, towards recently, after this becomes a massive issues of uh, fire and then of utilization by uh, large scale, for example, the intersections or sort of the links uh, came up. And you know, this 2015 environmental crisis, um, fire and haze in Indonesia, was really a big event. I yeah. mean, it became a local issue that became projected on national, even international scale. How did that incident and this crisis um, change policy in Indonesia towards peatland management? And also, did it wake up communities or change communities' actions? It definitely, you know, woke people up. Uh, sorry, I mean the policymakers up. So. Uh, of course, you know, our president sort of uh, established uh, the uh, Pitland Restoration Agency. And I think what has been the progress so far compared to what happened before 2015 is also the, uh, the fact that uh, many actors, stakeholders, they, they try to, uh, to have the, to have the uh, willingness to, you know, to cooperate, yeah? Some obstacles are still there, but policies have been established. Um, uh, but especially the policies are mostly for the um, uh, protection, for the rehabilitation, for the, for the restoration. But not so much, um, perhaps I, I, I actually now talk about the challenge already, not so much policies that are uh, on the um, align uh, align with the uh, the livelihoods of the local people, but at least you know people join forces. And you touched on this slightly. There are some challenges in terms of integrating livelihoods into the equation. Can you expand a bit on that? In terms of practices, there have been good practices, yes, but um, making it sustainable for the livelihoods to to continue. You know, it needs a list of uh, enabling conditions like market, like certain policies to ask private sectors to involve, for example, to be committed, you know, and different actors. And those are still challenging mm -hmm. at this point in time, I think. Uh, the small scale, at the small scale level, I think they survive, you know, but then by, uh, if, if these small scale people have to comply with restoration approaches like rewetting, revegetation, uh, paludiculture approach, there need to be other enablers or other enabling conditions for them to, act, to also sustain. You know? So that's, uh, yeah, I think that's still, uh, it, it, 
it shows some progress, but there are there's still bottlenecks. What do you think is the next step um, in terms of research into the connection between livelihoods and peat, whether your own research or um, for policymakers and other scientists? Yeah. Um, well, I think there are a, a whole a long list of, of, of uh, you know, potential research for that. But one thing is indeed uh, to see which species that can be uh, incorporated in which type of restoration and how they can be um, sort of domesticated and adopted by farmers not only from the biophysical perspectives, but as well as from the uh, livelihoods, uh, markets, you know, this type of economic return uh, perspectives. I think that type of uh, uh, research and assessments that produce concrete recommendation based on lessons learned, uh, but then to be applicable for larger audience, for upscaling to different contexts, I think that that would be really needed. And, and yeah, hopefully uh, the research communities respond to, to that type of uh, needs. Thank you so much for your time today. Okay, thank you so much.